Hi, I'm Shanine Netter, Program Manager for the Total Joint and Spine Centers at Inland Valley Medical Center. We understand you have a number of choices when it comes to your healthcare needs, and we want to thank you for allowing us to serve you on your way back to a healthier you. This presentation will cover those items you will need to understand before, during, and after your procedure. Following the presentation, you will be required to take a short quiz to test your knowledge. You will also have the opportunity to ask and submit any questions at that time. Again, thank you for choosing Inland Valley Medical Center, where we are committed to providing high quality patient care and patient experience. Total Joint Replacement Preoperative Education. Introduction. Welcome. The information provided in this video is a general guide to help you prepare for your total joint replacement surgery. If additional information is required, always seek advice from your physician regarding your specific needs. We have established goals for all of our total joint patients. However, we do understand that everyone will achieve them at a different pace. Objectives. Understanding your procedure. What to expect during your hospital stay. Physical occupational therapy. Pain management. How to care for yourself at home. Discharge planning. Total knee replacement. Removal of damaged bone and cartilage from your thigh bone, shin bone, and kneecap with insertion of an artificial joint, also called a prosthesis. Surgery is usually recommended to help reduce pain and increase mobility after conservative treatment has been attempted and failed. Total hip replacement. Removal of damaged bone and cartilage from your thigh bone and hip bone with insertion of an artificial joint also called prosthesis. Surgery is usually recommended to help reduce pain and increase mobility after conservative treatment has been attempted and failed. Preparing for your surgery guidebooks. As you prepare for surgery, please review your guidebook. The guidebook provides information regarding frequently asked questions, pre-op checklists, your preoperative exercise, what to expect during your hospital stay, caring for yourself at home, role of the caregiver, discharge instructions, and resuming your activities. The guidebook also contains resources for disease management, such as diabetes, COPD, and high blood pressure. It is important that pre-existing diseases are controlled and discussed with your surgeon to reduce your risk of post-operative complications. Bring your guidebook with you to the hospital and all doctor's appointments. Preparing for your surgery, your home. Our goal is to discharge you home safely. Here are a few tips to prepare your home for recovery. Equipment, chairs with armrests, raised toilet seat for hip replacement patients. Recliner chairs are okay. Declutter, remove throw rugs. Prepare frozen meals. Go to the grocery store. Arrange for someone to care for your pets and other household chores. Clean your recovery areas in your home with disinfectant to help prevent infection. Everything helps. Preparing for surgery, medical clearance. Please complete all appointments in a timely manner. Appointment with your primary care physician. Instructions to stop or change any medications your lab work, EKG, or chest x-ray if required by your physician, additional consults if necessary. Please review your current medication list with the list from your surgeon to outline which medications not to take before surgery. Stop taking medications that may cause bleeding at least seven to 10 days before surgery. This may include aspirins, and other anti-inflammatory medications. Preparing for surgery nutrition. Nutrition before surgery is important to help get your body optimized for surgery. Here are a few nutrition tips before surgery. Drink enough fluids prior to surgery, adequate protein intake, 
Examples, protein bars, protein shakes. Increase your fiber intake. Increase fiber to reduce the risk of constipation. Examples include fruits, whole grains, seeds, nuts, and vegetables. If okay with your primary care physician or surgeon, take an iron supplement or increase your foods high in iron. Examples, leafy greens, beans, and vegetables. Adequate calcium along with vitamin D as per your physician. Decrease alcohol intake for 48 hours prior to surgery. Preparing for surgery smoking. Stop smoking. Smoking delays your healing process, reduces the size of blood vessels, which decreases the amount of oxygen circulating in the body, increases your blood pressure and heart rate, and also increases your chance of having a blood clot. If you need help quitting, please ask for resources. We have them available. Preparing for surgery exercise. Start preoperative exercises. Beginning an exercise program before surgery can help make recovery faster and easier. Consult your physician before starting. Do not do any exercises that is too painful. A few preoperative exercise techniques are outlined in your guidebook, page 15. Try to do them twice a day, also including walking. Preparing for surgery, what to bring to the hospital. Please bring your guidebook, loose fitting clothing, shorts and t-shirts, any shoe or leg orthotics, no sandals or flip flops, leave valuables, cash and medications at home. Also identify your coach. Who is your coach? Your coach can be a family member or friend, someone who will provide comfort and motivation, someone who will be there to support and assist in your therapy sessions, and also help you to gain confidence for discharge home. Note, due to the current health pandemic, Inland Valley has implemented the following visitation restrictions. Visiting hours are from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. Only one visitor per day. Visitors are not allowed to go in and out of the facility. Preparing for surgery, pre-admission testing slash registration. A pre-admitting RN will review labs, EKG and other test results, review your medication list, request a copy of your advanced directives, your MRSA screening, special instructions on showering and bathing, notification of hospital arrival time will be given at the pre-admission attesting appointment, notification of your drive-by COVID test. Due to the current health pandemic, the pre-admission test will be conducted over the phone you should expect a phone call a few days before your surgery with additional information regarding testing and surgical instructions. Please have your phones available to leave a voicemail message if you are unable to answer the phone. Day before surgery. Nothing to eat or drink after midnight prior to surgery. Note, if you and your physician have decided that you will be discharged the same day of surgery, you will receive special instructions prior to your surgery regarding dietary needs. Shower or bathe with special soap the night before your surgery and the morning of your surgery. Please notify your surgeon or the hospital staff immediately if you feel sick, if you have a fever, cough, or shortness of breath, if you have any open cuts, scratches, or wounds on any parts of your body, are having trouble urinating with fever frequency and urgency. Day of surgery arrival. Report to the emergency room admitting entrance. Check in at the information desk. Hospital registration will occur. Please bring your insurance card and photo ID. You and one designated visitor will be escorted to the pre-op waiting area. Meet anesthesiologist and surgeon. The anesthesiologist will review your health and medication history, discuss nausea and pain management concerns, review the anesthesia options, which are spinal and general. All knee replacement patients will receive a regional anesthesia, which is also considered a block. This block does cause muscle weakness for about 18 to 24 hours after surgery and does help to control the pain.
After surgery, you will be escorted to the recovery room, recovery room post anesthesia care unit. In the recovery room, the nurses will stabilize your vital signs, make sure that you are able to move your extremities, which is called the neuromuscular assessment, take care of all of your comfort measures. Note, there are no visitors allowed in the recovery room. We have a dedicated unit for all of our total joint replacements. Day of surgery, same day discharge. Your surgeon will determine if you are a candidate for same day discharge before surgery. Our goal is for you to walk soon after surgery when it is safe with physical therapy. Your coach is required to participate in your recovery. Once all criteria is met, you will be discharged from the recovery room on the same day of surgery in the care of your coach for the first 24 hours. Day of surgery, hospital routine. Our goal is for you to walk on the same day of surgery before midnight, either with physical therapy or nursing staff. Your vital signs will be monitored every four hours for 24 hours. You will have continuous oxygen level monitoring for 24 hours. Recovery, hospital routine. You will be up and dressed in your recliner between 6 a.m. to 7.30 each morning. If you have a urinary catheter, it is removed today. You will have breakfast in the recliner chair, an individual physical therapy session, lunch in the recliner chair, another individual physical therapy session, individual occupational therapy session, discharge home in the afternoon. Recovery walking. Walking begins on the same day of surgery. We will track your progress daily. Our goal is for you to walk between 200 to 300 feet before discharge. Recovery physical therapy. Physical therapy evaluation happens on the same day or early the next morning. Physical therapy works with you with getting in and out of bed, getting in and out of a chair, walking, stairs, and transfers. If you have any barriers that you are concerned about at home, for example, high beds, low beds, stairs, etc., please write it down in your guidebook to review with the physical therapy staff. Recovery, occupational therapy. An occupational therapist is a therapist who will work with you with activities of daily living, such as bathing, dressing, and hygiene. They tend to work more closely with the hip patients by using assistive devices such as reachers, sock aids, shoe horns, and long handle sponge. We suggest that all total hip replacement patients purchase these items prior to surgery. Recovery post-op complications. Please discuss with your surgeon the possible risk factors and complications associated with surgery, such as blood clots, infection, pneumonia, anesthesia-related complications such as nausea, vomiting, and low blood pressure. Recovery, key things to remember. Postoperatively, our goal is to reduce the risk of postoperative complications. Here are a list of postoperative activities that you can do as you recover in the hospital and at home. Sequential compression devices remain on while lying and sitting. Out of bed to the recliner chair. Walk in the hallways. Use your incentive spirometer 10 times an hour while awake. For total knee replacements, no pillow under your operative knee. Recovery falls. Falls are also considered a complication. To prevent falls, please call or ask for assistance before attempting to get out of bed or out of your recliner. Wear skid-free socks at all times while walking. Staff will round on you frequently. For the total knee replacements, please keep your knee immobilizer secured to your knee until physical therapy has worked with you. Hip joint precautions. Total hip replacement patients only. Please review your total hip joint precautions. Do not bend your hip past 90 degrees. Do not twist your legs inward. Do not cross your legs. Do not sit in low chairs or lean forward to stand. Please follow these joint precautions as per your physician's guidance. 
Recovery Pain Management. Effective pain management involves you and your healthcare team. Our goal is to manage your pain after surgery with realistic pain management goals. This is your pain scale. Pain is rated from zero to 10, 10 being the worst possible pain. Our goal is to manage your discomfort so you are able to eat, sleep, hold a conversation, and move around with physical therapy. Recovery types of discomfort. Incision site, soreness, pressure. We treat that with pain medications, cold therapy, slash ice packs. Swelling and bruising, tightness around the incision site or joint. We treat that with compression and elevation, cold therapy, and or ice packs. Recovery additional comfort measures. In addition to pain medication, please utilize the following to help to relieve your discomfort. Cold therapy. Ice packs are available and yours to take home upon discharge. Change your positions often. Utilize aromatherapy. Utilize music. Up in the chair and walking. Ask staff if it is okay for coaches to walk with you. Never refuse an opportunity to walk. Remember, we can't make the pain go completely away. Our goal is to manage the discomfort so you can eat, sleep, and move around. Your role in managing pain. Intercept the pain. Ask for pain medication when the pain starts to escalate. Do not wait. Take your pain medication on a regular basis. Tell the nurse if the medication is not effective. Ask questions. Be sure you understand the pain management efforts that are in place and their side effects. Recovery, transition to home. Our goal is to discharge you home after surgery because it helps reduce your risk for infection, your home environment is more familiar, get back to your routines quicker, your food preferences, and more comfortable. Average length of stay is one day. It all depends on you. Transition to home, discharge plan. Discharge plan starts before the surgery and includes the patient slash family discussion prior to surgery, your surgeon, the program manager, therapist, and the inpatient care coordinator. Transition to home after care. Discharge plan options, home with outpatient physical therapy, home with home health physical therapy, which requires approval from your surgeon. Arrange your outpatient therapy at least one to three days from your expected discharge date. Address transportation arrangements prior to discharge. Transition home equipment. You will need a front wheel rolling walker, bedside commode, which is optional for total knees. Please check with your insurance coverage. Contact your surgeon's office to obtain these items before your surgery. Note, do not discard your equipment after surgery. Your insurance may only cover every five years. Transition home, discharge medications, narcotics. Take pain medication exactly as prescribed. Speak to your surgeon about when to decrease or discontinue pain medications. Please take stool softeners. Resume your preoperative medications as per your surgeon. Do not take NSAIDs unless approved by your surgeon. Examples, Aleve, Motrin. Continue to use your incentive spirometer. Transition to home medications, blood thinners. Blood thinners will be prescribed to help reduce blood clots at home. If you are prescribed aspirin, Please take it orally and daily as per your surgeon's orders. Your surgeon will advise you for how long. Lovenox is a daily injection. No lab tests are required. You usually take this medication for 7 to 10 days. Or if you're on anticoagulant medications such as Coumadin, Plavix, or Xeralto, you will continue these after surgery as per your surgeon. Caring for yourself at home. Change your positions often, follow your joint precautions, walk daily and steadily, increasing your distance, limit your stair use to two times a day for the first week at home, 
Continue using your incentive spirometer, hand hygiene to prevent infection. Remember, measure your progress weekly. Do your exercises regularly. Eat a healthy, balanced diet. Drink plenty of fluids. Do not smoke. No showering unless otherwise instructed by your surgeon. Post-operative dressings last 10 to 14 days after surgery. Do not remove your dressing unless instructed by your surgeon. Follow up with your surgeon 7 to 10 days or as discussed with your surgeon. Do not miss your follow-up appointment. We're listening. We appreciate your feedback. An effort to ensure we are always providing safe, high-quality, and compassionate care, please take a few minutes to let us know if we met your expectations. In the few days after you leave our hospital, you may get a phone call, email, or letter asking about your recent hospital stay. This request will come from a company by the name of Press Ganey. The caller ID is 574-309-9553. Again, my name is Shanine Netter. I am the orthopedic program manager here at Inland Valley Medical Center. Always feel free to contact me with questions or concerns Monday through Friday during regular business hours. Good luck with your surgery. Now it's time to test your knowledge. Click the link below to start your quiz.